Hey everyone, so now we're doing our annual Trends from Computex video for the PC hardware industry. We did one last year for Computex 2017, and for that one we primarily talked about RGB LEDs and tempered glass. Not really a surprise looking back at the year, so I'd like to say we called it, but it was pretty obvious. This year, RGB LEDs and tempered glass persist, but they are a bit more tasteful. It's less glue it on everything and more figure out how to glue it onto something in a way that actually makes sense. So that's one of the things we'll be talking about. We have a couple of other trends to go over in this video though. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake's View 37 case. The View 37 focuses on highlighting custom PC builds with its full panoramic window and tinted front acrylic. In our thermal testing, the View 37 performed reasonably well when considering its looks focused build which is partly thanks to the airflow design and the removal of a bottom power supply shroud. For a balance of looks and performance, check the link in the description below for the View 37. So for the first one, as noted, more tasteful RGB LED implementation from the show. And by this, mostly what we've observed is that a lot of the LEDs this year are going in the form of digital LEDs on the components. So on things like motherboards, stuff like that, you'll get the full spectrum LED as opposed to just single diodes all over them. So not placing LEDs on just everything anymore. They are actually diffusing them more, the manufacturers that is. So the RGB LED implementation, I guess it's a bit less offensive than last year, but it's still present. Glass still on pretty much everything. Corsair was sort of big last year with doing just literally every single side of the case putting glass on it except for the back and we haven't seen quite as much of that this year so i guess that's a good thing it means that uh, we're refining the trend rather than just leaving it as a pure fad like it was last year where just having it was enough to get interest now it actually has to be refined to get interest because it's not good enough on its own anymore next big one is the ecosystems that's the the word the manufacturers like to use the ecosystem where basically they want to make every single component in your pcs now so you have people like gigabyte making memory power supplies coolers cases literally every component that goes in there and all the vendors are basically doing peripherals as well including asus in a big way asus trying to do cases and with these big motherboard makers a lot of the time they seem to think that just existing is enough for them to get sales because they do so well and operate on such low margin with their main their core business that making something like a case seems easy to them and turns out you look at asus's cases they're not that great actually and the same is true for gigabyte so these companies have a lot to learn from these smaller manufacturers who make cases as a primary product category but uh, they are trying to all go the route of basically building what they call an ecosystem, a big stupid buzzword right now that basically means they want to sell every single component that you put in a computer. So not something we're big fans of. Really what we'd rather see is companies focusing on what they do kind of okay now or well and then improve on it rather than trying to do everything of questionable quality for all of those things. So another example of these peripheral manufacturing operations that are going on now with ASUS, Gigabyte, so forth, they're able to do peripherals at a much, much higher margin than they're used to because for ASUS, Gigabyte, EVGA, all of them, GPU ma manufacturing is less than 10% margin. You're talking 4 to 8% in the worst cases for those people. So to make a keyboard where they can suddenly step down in their, uh, their prices by 50% and still make margin, that shows why they're doing this. Corsair is a great example. They routinely cut their prices by something like 50% towards holidays and that's because they can still make money on it with a 50 percent discount the next one is airflow so airflow seems to be back in a bigger way and it's under more consideration this year than last year which is a good thing because last year was so dominated by glass and rgb leds that we lost sight of having decent airflow and this isn't some crusade to have airflow in every single case ever it's just it needs to be enough that you actually still have some performance and here's the other thing if you have decent airflow and the focus of the case is silence by not restricting the intake, you can cut down the RPM of the fans and reduce noise. So if the focus is silence, you still get that by having an open front case. It's just through a different means than closing it off. And there's a balance to be sure. Companies like Be Quiet have more or less figured it out, but other companies like BitPhoenix are still trying to figure it out. So uh, Airflow is hopefully looking like a bit more of a trend this year than last year in that the companies I think have have had their fun with glass and now they're cutting it back and trying to figure out how to mix the two in a more 
uh, actually functional fashion. So that's great to see. The SL600M is a good example, H500. Enermax is looking at doing mesh or glass options on their cases, so is Bit Phoenix. Uh, and it looks like overall an improvement in that front. The next one, last two actually, Big BRMs were pretty trendy at this show. So for AMD motherboards, especially AM4 and, and Threadripper, everyone's preparing for higher current draw chips. So Threadripper 2 especially. And on the Intel side, they're preparing for the eight core chips on Z390. So with those in mind, bigger VRMs, there are a lot of 3555s, a lot of 3556 MOSFETs used. Those are IR parts. So you see a lot of 60 amp, 50 amp, and 40 amp power stages being used on really big VRMs and in preparation for the higher power draw chips, that's a good thing, it makes a lot of sense. The motherboard vendors seem to actually be getting ahead of the CPU vendors for once, and that's actually pretty rare. So that's a good thing to see as well. And then finally, shiny and glossy RAM, looks like it might be a trend. This is one we're taking a shot in the dark because Galax had it and G-Skill had it, and between those two companies making fake gold-plated RAM or silver-plated RAM, quotes around that, it's possible that we could see other vendors following suit because if LEDs aren't doing it for people enough anymore, then I guess gloss and fake gold plating is the way to go next. So that seems to be one of the trends we picked up on at the show. That's all of them for now for this year. If there were any trends you noticed while watching our coverage, leave them in the comment section below because we saw a lot of stuff. So you might be able to connect the dots a bit better being that you had all of our videos to go through. As always, subscribe for more. Go back through the channel, catch CompuText coverage if you missed any of it. YouTube probably didn't send all of it to your sub boxes. Patreon.com slash GamersNexus helps out directly and store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats, which are on back order and on the way for the next round. And as always, I'll see you all next time.